Welcome to Two Guys, One Podcast. I'm one guy, and wait a minute. This isn't our regular studio, and there's no other guy beside me. <laughs> um, other guy had some family entanglements that tied him up this week, and an awesome trip this weekend that we're going to be hearing about in uh, episode 101 next Sunday. But until then, I thought I'd give you another Best Of episode. This is Two Guys Best Of Part 3, and it includes bits from episodes 76 through 95. There's some genuinely good stuff in here, really, uh, including an impromptu visit from our least favorite Frenchman, Jean-Pierre the Tutu Maker. So check out the website for all the links. Find us on Facebook and Twitter and whatnot, but mostly just keep downloading or streaming or telepathically listening to this silly little weekly internet radio show. We make it just for you. Well, mostly for you. A little bit for you, at least. Okay? All right. Here we go. Uh, but do, So we have no news? No news. Hmm. No news is good news. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> Why? I have a news article I, I might have to find. Mm. All right, then. It's about, you know, the... Uh, you know, to carry the thread of how hard and difficult it is being a um, being a middle class white man. Stuff. <laughs> being a being a Protestant straight white man. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep fighting the fight. Somebody has to. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody has to carry the flaming cross for 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 white malehood. It's hard, man. It's hard life. I think there's a song in Annie about it, isn't there? It's a, it's a hard knock life. life. Isn't that about being a straight middle class <laughs> a white, white man? man from from a non broken home? Isn't that what that song's about? I think. Um, uh, okay, well we'll get to that in a moment. In a, in a moment, first of all, since you interrupted me, let's properly introduce the show. Two guys, one podcast. I'm one guy. I'd be a pioneer because I'd be a short, fat white guy playing basketball too. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I'm the other. 29% of my meat's horse meat. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And I have both of the microphones on. <laughs> I hope it doesn't cheapen our relationship. I lose more and more respect for you every time we do this show. <laughs> Two guys, one podcast. And this is the podcast. Before we start the show, I just want to take a moment. A moment in honor of, in memory of, in respect to this borderline reasonable amount of facial hair that now resides <laughs> on my face. <laughs> I had no idea where you were going with it, but as soon as you said borderline, I knew. <laughs> but honestly, like, I mean, I, I take a moment. Take, I'm going to get out from behind the mic here. Take a look. Like, how, how, long, how long does that take you to grow that it, sweet, <laughs> trashy thing on your face? Listen, listen. I've been I've been trimming and molding, uh, manicuring. No, you have not. Yeah, oh yes, I have, dude. It looks now, so bad. It's terrible. It's still super fucking patchy. But there's hair everywhere, right? You, there's hair in all the places where there's supposed to be hair. There's you look few. like a mutant baby. Or you look like you're halfway through chemo. Your face, your face no, got cancer. It's not that. It's not like it's not cancer face. Here's what I I, That's I cancer face hair. <laughs> I told uh, I told Honeybun the other day that I look like. Do, you don't watch Parenthood, do you? No, but I just want to like. All right. I'm I am surprised. Like I have seen you in nothing. But darkness, really, since it, like the lights weren't on really at the house, it's, <laughs> right. it's nighttime outside, we get in the car, I'm not looking at you because I'm driving. Right. We get over here walking through the dark, <laughs> we sit down at the table and there's mics and all kinds of shit in front of us, so it's, you, you can't, yeah, you can't really see I'm your like, face. I'm like, boo! <laughs> but man, I gotta tell you, now that I look at it, like, it's fucking bad. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. <laughs> it's not really, no, but it's, I was so proud of it. <laughs> like, no, don't get me wrong. It is great for you. <laughs> like, it, like it, it really is. I don't think I've ever seen this much hair on your face. But There's never been this much hair on my face. Fuck. Here's, I told. <laughs> why do you have to, why do, dude. Why do why I have do you, to draw attention to it? No, why do you have to shave? Dude, I want to see what's going to happen to it. No, I don't. I this is what I like. I don't shave. 
I trim like I because I don't like I don't want it to be like well like I'm trying to to get it to thicken up. Oh no! Did so you like grow, I keep it manicured. No, man, manicure. you grow it out like a fucking bush and then trim it how you want it. But it's got to get to that point. <laughs> you gotta, I gotta let it go. Yeah. Let it go, let it go. I didn't want to be the only thing that didn't have that that song <laughs> this week. That was a good. That was a good good uh, squeeze in right there. <laughs> good drop in. Whoop. <laughs> Uh, welcome to Two Guys One Podcast. I'm one guy, and I'm the other. And this is the podcast. Um, welcome back, uh, old listeners. Welcome, new listeners. Uh, what's great about podcast is literally tens of you right now are having a shared experience. How fantastic is that? You know, I actually thought I was thinking about this the other day. The podcast medium is is fascinating because even even shows that are extremely popular. If you go, if you go to iTunes or to Stitcher and you look at the top shows, I'm talking about like the Mark Marins, the, the WTFs of the world. The um, Smodcast is a very highly listened show. Uh, what's the NPR ones? This American Life yep. is the, uh, always like the number one. Mabimba Bam. Mabimba Bam. Well, that's a highly rated show, but that's not. It's not like the tops of. They have hundreds of thousands of listeners, probably. Like the NPR shows have millions of listeners every week. We have tens. Well, we have more than well, <laughs> we, have, we have. We have. We occasionally have hundreds. But but here's even though no matter how large or small the audience is, uh, think about this, man. Odds are somebody's having a shared orgasm. Uh well, th- that's what I was going to say. Was even. Even the shows that have very, very large listener bases, like, for instance, Mabimba Bam. Let's say, and I think they mentioned this one time on a show, they've got like a couple hundred thousand downloads a month or something like that. Let's say that they had an audience of 100,000, which I don't think is way off base. But if 100,000 people listen to your show every week, there's enough minutes, enough hours in, in the week, etc., it's very likely that most of those people, at least for some portion of the show, are the only person listening to that at the time. Podcasting, no, no. podcasting what? is a communal experience. It's a communal communal experience in that many people are sharing an intimate conversation. But it's a very lonely and intimate medium as well. I think because it is, it is very one on one. Radio is like this big broadcast. The guy from the black box is talking to everyone. And yet it seems more intimate than television or a newspaper uh, because of the fact that it's audio. One, one voice generally coming right at you. Podcasting, I say, is even more intimate, though, because like it's generally listened to with, with headphones like it's, or, or in your car when you're alone, like commutes. No, no think about this. I think you're adding too many minutes to your scenario, right? There's not really as many minutes as you think as you think that there are. There's right? a Broadway so, song about how many minutes there is in a week, isn't there? Right. I no, but but think about this: one hundred eighty-nine thousand minutes a second. I don't know. <laughs> My point is, people aren't going to. The majority of people listening aren't going to do it at work, and the majority of people work nine to five, Monday through Friday. The majority of people are asleep by midnight. You got to take out all the hours between midnight and five and take out a large portion of the hours between nine and five. I think you're way wrong on the no. people don't listen at work. No. I think the vast majority of people, other guy, have a job that is fairly mindless for large portions of it. And like everybody sitting at a cubicle can listen to our show at work. Yes. Most of them are listening to music, and the ones that like comedy or podcasts are listening most to comedy workers, or podcasts. Most workers have what we like to call a manager, whose job it is to ensure that those people are as productive as they could possibly be. Oh, yeah, there's sure. Not a, there's not an office manager. There's not somebody who's not walking around saying, hey, man. Uh, and most companies have policies against it. No, I, d- I disagree. I don't think most co- I, th- I don't think most companies in the modern era do have have policies against against audio stuff. I think most companies are like, 
do whatever you do when you're not on the phone or talking to somebody. Like, but you got to be available, obviously. And then you're only like, looking you at, can't turn on your podcast and, then, and be like, "Fuck off!" I'm listening to. And then you're two only guys. looking at office jobs that do that. Most jobs have sh- safety regulations or need some kind of uh, m- uh, monitor oh, yeah, okay, of safety, okay. so you have to be able to hear, right? All right, so maybe in the general population, the the majority of jobs are are uh, not blue collar, or excuse me, are not white collar. They are they're blue collar, and therefore you're doing something all day. So, so you're can't saying, have something in your so you're ear. saying, so you're saying, our it's listener a sh- base isn't. You're you're saying it's a shared experience because while people may not be listening to it at the exact same time, they're all having it within that week or within yeah. within the life of that episode, right? Yeah, and it's I'm just saying, weird, okay, cyclical. and I'm saying far more people are having a shared experience at the same time than what you believe. Maybe so. I believe I, there's more go. people out there having eargasms at the same time. And that's not a that's 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 a precious thing, right? <laughs> uh, you, uh, like that communal... means you love like if you're if you're eargasming at the same time, man, that's just not a, a random hookup. That's love. Sim- simultaneous eargasm, I think, is definitely a shine a, a sign that you're part of the community. Yeah. Because if one has an orgasm before the other, then One's doing way more work than the other. And they're like, man, just, I'm done. Let me just go to bed. <laughs> I don't think that's true. Is that, do, is that true in your own life? I don't, I don't, I sometimes I'm, I'm fine with, I'm fine with the other party uh, finding satisfaction early on. Now, here's the deal. If I find satisfaction early on, then I'm kind of out of the game for a while. I'm I done. Get, I get, my, 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 my brain gets fuzzy and I need to be still and quiet for, for a period of time. <laughs> there was a time in my youth where I might get a bounce back rapidly, but that time is it's no longer. I need 25, 35 minutes of recoup time easily. No? You're not going to yeah, follow right. me there? Okay. You're right. You want to go to the rundown, don't you? Yes. All right. What would you think about my sound effect? Too long. Really? I knew I knew you were going to do it too long. It, but it, went in, it was just a bit. It goes under the conversation. Like, the thing itself was very quick, and then it goes under the conversation. You saying I the part before I talk the part before I t- I put us talking. Well, I didn't like us talking over it either. Why? I d- wh- <laughs> it's good music, da, 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 or whatever it is. I don't it's remember. It's distracting. It. It's, not it's distracting whenever the whole show doesn't have underlying music. <laughs> All right, fine. I'll change it this week. Yeah, don't fucking put it under us. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, a little. Who are these guys? Which we're gonna start with right now. Oh, right on. I, who am I? I am the father of twins, my friend. Dos bebidos. Dos toquitos, por favor. Uh, except not taquitos, whatever the Spanish word is for baby, which is not taquitos, I'm pretty sure. Uh, el burro is another Spanish word that I know, but that doesn't have anything pretty to sure do with Pretty sure it's that. not babies. No, no it doesn't. Uh, but I got two of them. I got two motherfucking babies. Uh, and of course, I already had... Two uh, babies. They're not babies anymore. They're they're sons. They're strapping fine young men. Son number one and Deuce. But now I got twin girls, man, and they're here, and they're so perfect. They came they came a little early, uh, just a hair over thirty five weeks. So that was uh, a little. Oh, I have a note about whenever about uh, the girls. Yeah, I was just going through my notes to see if I had anything for this week. I got a couple of notes, uh, and I did have a note uh, from whenever. Mrs. Other Guy and I came to visit you guys in the hospital like the day it happened. Oh, nice. All right. Well, cool. But but uh, they're here. Honey Bun did so well. She was superwoman. She's Wonder Woman. She's, you know, Captain Marvel. She's all of the uh, amazing female superheroes rolled into one. She made these two perfect little people. So she's got a dick? No, the super, super the female superheroes is what I said. The superheroines. You said Captain Marvel. Captain Marvel's a woman. Captain no. Yes, Captain Marvel is Carol Danvers. I don't the, believe you. Captain Marvel is Carol Danvers, the blonde-haired superheroine who Rogue got her flying and impervious powers from and super strength. Yes, read your, read your fucking. I will be vindicated in that vindication. First off, I don't read chick comments. <clears throat> Oh, well, this isn't just a chick comic, though. It's it's uh, stories about women can be stories about us all, sir. We all come from from woman. Hear me roar, no? All right. 
my point is you've been surrounded by too much damn estrogen there is a lot of estrogen in my house now that is a true damn story uh my point is my my, now we're gonna get a a listener mail being like well they're really not producing a whole lot of estrogen right now so here it's really not you're just you're just being you know sensitive let me tell you what they are producing a lot of poop i've forgotten how much babies poop a lot of poop in my house uh, you know, Honey Bun said the estimate is for twins in the first 60, 60 days, you'll change 900 to 1,400 diapers. That's a tremendous amount of ass wiping that's going on at my house right now. It's also a tremendous amount of variance. Like the low, like the, the high end is almost double the low end. Yeah, but the low end is still way more ass wiping than you want to do in a 60 day period. <laughs> yeah, but it's like like it should be like oh nine to uh, twelve hundred maybe. <laughs> You're right? just but saying they have that, that far of a variance. Like, saying that's a up? it's a weatherman variance there, right? Yeah, could be six inches to a foot of snow, and you're like, yeah, that fucking matters. That is the most <laughs> least helpful stat. Ever. Yeah, it's somewhere the 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 uh the hurricane is gonna make landfall somewhere between Maine and Florida. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Thank you, Captain Obvious. Captain Obvious is a boy, for the record. <laughs> My babies aren't though. I got two little girls and they're amazing. And Honeybun's gonna be on the show soon. As a matter of fact, we're gonna bring the girls we talked about it the other night. We're gonna bring the girls into the studio and just when they cry, we'll just edit that part out. Or maybe some of it we won't. Then then what the f- well, then what the fuck would you put them in the studio for if you're just going to edit them out? Yeah, because we don't. Because that way we won't have to get a babysitter. We can just do it. We we she and I are going to record another episode of our uh, ongoing story and talk about the girls and talk about the birth and everything. I promise you, me and Mrs. Other Guy will not mind going by the house <laughs> and playing with the babies for an hour. Well, I'm sure, but I. And it, well, okay, yeah, I guess that would. Well, there you go. The godparents can keep them, which you're only going to watch one of them. You're going to watch out for the other one too. Well, that's why you have Captain and Jake. <laughs> <laughs> my dogs cannot take care of the girls um before we get to the listener mail i, I want to give a little update here a couple of weeks ago we were talking about um copycats oh, before we before we get off the girls oh, i'm sorry you got a note for the note. girls yes uh, i guess i haven't seen too many babies born mm-hmm. man but they had your babies fucking on on lockdown and i'm pretty sure Murder was the case that they gave them. What do you mean? They had ankle bracelets on. They they did they have. Under, they were under incubator arrest. They, they, well, there wasn't an incubator there, but they were under. They're under floor arrest. If you the little ankle bracelet, they're Martha Stewart ankle ankle bracelets. If you go too close to the elevators with a baby, the alarm sound and all the doors on the floor lock, and then the floor and then the doors on the outside of the hospital lock all together. It's uh, really alarming. Like they grow, not to use a pun. They grow up with like Lindsay Lohan as their idol, and they don't know why. <laughs> yeah, they're like, I don't know. I just got this urge to run from the from the authorities. <laughs> I don't know, Daddy. I just feel locked down, and this this ankle feels a little heavy for some reason. Uh, no, they. It, I don't think that's even that part of it wasn't that new. I want to say that even when I had the boys, the hospital was pretty like, yeah, you cannot take the babies out without. Like triple forms of identification and your social security card or something. I understand that, but I mean, these chicks were tagged, man. <laughs> yeah, no, they do that now, and like multiple, like multiple bracelets on each of the babies, and then the ankle tag with like the, like it's, <laughs> a, it's an ele- it's an electronic <laughs> ankle bracelet. Yes. Like like it looks like if you took them too far, it would explode and there'd be purple ink all over everything. Yes. <laughs> we know who got the baby. Like they're gonna grow <laughs> up with the right leg just being stronger. Just had to do more work from the beginning. I got no idea why that one's just bulging all over the thigh. It's just yeah. huge. Uh, no, none of that. You were complaining recently. I think this was Uh-oh. a few episodes back. But we were discussing the fact that in the modern era, the internet, smartphones in particular, have allowed us to be ever available. Yeah. You were specifically pissed off because it had interrupted your mowing time. Oh. oh you remember I- this? I, you know what I've um, so you might not believe this, but I used to run like the wind blows. <laughs> um, haven't do, haven't haven't done it for years, and uh, I need you I, some I, magic legs. I started <laughs> I started uh, started running again, but the but the aggravating thing is while I'm running, I'd be listening to a podcast or listen to Pandora, or whatever I was listening to. 
But in a 30 minute run, I was constantly getting phone calls, which was just aggravating. So I'm, I've gotten better from disconnecting myself from my phone. I put it on silent, I turn it off, whatever it is can wait. Uh, and I'm feeling much happier. It could be the working out, or it could be just that, that 30 minutes a day to where I'm not having that anxiety from who the fuck is calling me. What the fuck do I have to do now? What is so goddamn important? Like, I just hate being, I hate being that connected to somebody. Uh, well, I think the, the French have an idea on how to fix this problem for everybody. When the French clock off at 6 p.m., they really mean it. That's the headline. This is coming from theguardian.com. A new labor agreement in France means that employees must ignore their boss's work emails once they are out of the office and relaxing at home, even on their smartphones. Just in case you weren't jealous enough of the French already, what with their effortless uh, effortless style, lovely accents, and collective will to calorie control, I don't um, agree with with any, any of this. Any of that? You don't think the you don't like the accent? You don't you don't think French is kind of sexy? No, I think it's pretentious, and they sound like fucking dicks. <laughs> now, granted, I understand that sound like an ignorant, backwitted fucking bumpkin. I completely understand that. So, uh, sure, I'm judging a book by its cover. After noticing the ability of bosses to invade their employees' home lives via smartphone at any hour of the day or night, uh, and that that was enabling real work hours to extend further and further beyond the 35-hour week the country famously introduced in 99, that's right, ladies and gentlemen, they don't work a 40-hour week. They definitely don't work a fucking 60-hour week like some of us do. They work a 35-hour week. That's, hey, cool. That's mandated. This, uh, I'm sure most listeners would think that I would hate this article and I would make fun of the French for it. But kudos to them, man. Yeah, well, I mean, they've put it into the law. When you've, when, you've, when you've resigned yourself to not being a world leader anymore, <laughs> you can go take a fucking nap. <laughs> Just take the whole month of July yeah. off if you want. Just yeah. go ahead. You're, you're never you, – you, that country is putting its people – and the, and the people, I'm sure, are allowing it to happen into a fucking box, into a rut that they're never going to better their situation because of. Fucking ever. <laughs> so, hey, garçon, Pierre, <laughs> s- sit there, drink your fucking wine, eat your goddamn cheese. Uh, Get used and to bringing goods. us those baguettes. Yeah, and baked goods. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to continue working my ass off to better my situation, and that's just the way it's going to be. Like, we're an industrious country. So, so it's not that you love that they're taking time off. It's not that the, that you love the relaxation. It's that you love that somebody got out of the race. Yeah, it makes it easier for us. It makes it easier for us. <laughs> Under the deal, which affects around 250,000 employees in the technology and consultancy and, sectors. Oh, before, let me, I'm not, I'm, you no, got me on a, on, on a rant now. That's okay. Uh, it's so we, we've both we've both we've traveled, and sure. sh- I I I can completely understand how other countries and other people can can look down their noses at us and and think that maybe sometimes we do terrible terrible things. Well, for those people out there, for those countries who may have that stigma of Americans and think that we're assholes, maybe we're assholes because we're working sixty and seventy hours a goddamn week. Some weeks not even getting a day off. Uh, so we're gonna come. We're we're gonna be a little ornery. We're gonna be a little uh, a little tense. We're gonna we're gonna, we're not gonna be able to relax. So sorry. Um, so two hundred and fifty thousand employees in the technology and consultancy sectors of the French um, market are included in this. That includes the French arms of Google, Facebook. Uh, and PwC. Employees will also have to resist the temptation to look at work-related material on their computers or smartphones or any other kind of malevolent intrusion into the time they have been nationally mandated to spend on whatever the French call la dolce vita. Uh, Companies must ensure that their employees come under no pressure to do so. The good life. Thus the spirit of the law and of France as well as the letter shall be observed. Can you believe this, man? I mean, they're so so effectively, they're, hamst- they're hamstring and their productivity is what they're doing. It's you ridiculous. can't require your employees to respond to work email after six o'clock. I think that's ridiculous. 
I think I want to get a job in France. <laughs> I don't. It it if you're if you uh, if you're trying to get ahead if you're trying to get ahead how do you get, how the fuck do you get ahead how do you I get promoted I, I, if you're I don't not know. outworking somebody that, that's I mean yes if the whole if the whole marketplace is as a mandated level of the same com- productivity. Hey, I don't think that's communism, man. <laughs> it's, that's I communism. It's a little weird. Socialist fucks. It's a little weird. There's no doubt about it. I, I mean, I don't get me wrong. I'm sure they're going to have nice evening time, but that's that's weird. I man. am Jean-Pierre, the tutu maker. I make the tutus only until 6 p.m. <laughs> and then I no longer make the tutus. I, uh... I am bilingual. I speak uh, English and uh, the language of love. Oh, wee wee. wee. <laughs> you 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 speak urine. People uh, often ask me. They say uh, Jean Pierre. I say oui, mon ami. <laughs> they say uh, Jean Pierre. How do you like your women? I say my women, mon ami. Oh, you know, like uh, my fries, <laughs> hot and very French. <laughs> What about Salty, Pierre? I feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> That's your best character thus far on the show. That's your best it's, character it's, by far. I feel <laughs> I feel bad that I made him a tutu maker. I wonder if that just that, I wonder if that's my bias toward the French. <laughs> I, I, I mean you could have made him a you could have made him a baguette salesman. I uh, do not uh, <laughs> like to bake uh my uh you know, I got into the tutu business because my family already had the uh, textile factory. Yes, what, what um, did you make before the tutus? We made the little, uh, the little black and white uh, striped shirts uh, that became popular with the mind. <laughs> so you're you're responsible for the Marcel Marceau. Let's just say it helps uh, trap them in the box. <laughs> so would you say that your family really knows their onions when it comes to fabric? Oh. <laughs> I got caught up in the fucking character and forgot about the game. <laughs> ah, fuck it. I give up. <laughs> it's what the French do best. <laughs> Jamail! Jamail is here! Ooh. Uh, uh, this is from M. I still remember the time I got a CD player boombox, so that must be it. I I remember my first CD player. I don't. You don't? I remember my first Walkman. Uh, I I remember my first Walkman too, but my first CD player was a boombox, and it was like shock resistant. Because <laughs> but, like, because you remember like in the it was car, not like shock you resistant. You, you know, like if you didn't have a CD player, they had the converter. Yes, you got the little tape deck thing. Yeah, that go in there, and so you put the little. Tape converter in there. Wait a minute. But Let's every break time this you down. hit a fucking, every time you hit a fucking bump or <laughs> move the 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 discman at any point, the whole fucking thing just locked skips. up. The whole, you the might whole as well skip. just eject that CD, start over with another disc. Hope that you don't. <laughs> what's best? Let's just park in the driveway and we'll listen to CDs. For yeah, but if, but if you know you had that shock, you know, built in, then it didn't skip nearly as much. Still skipped. It still skipped like a motherfucker. Yeah. That's like I like I listen to an MP3 now, and I even in your car sometimes. Like in your car is pretty good, but occasionally in your car you hit a pothole and your CD will skip. Even fucking today, I'm like, they haven't fixed that shit yet. Come on, man. I mean, I guess it's just like it's a physical mechanism of like the laser actually shooting the thing, and so that could be jarred. And oh, there's nothing they could do about science. that. Science. <laughs> yeah. Oh, physics. <laughs> <laughs> Laws of physics. You win again. <laughs> I keep throwing this apple in the air and it keeps smacking me in the head. But one of these days, <laughs> physics. <laughs> Pal zap to the moon. Um, Which uh, China just did, by the way. They made it to the moon? Third country to ever do it. Who? Oh, the Russians win, I guess. Yeah, huh? they did it in 76. Did they really? Yeah, man. We were never there at the same time, right? Uh, That'd be awkward. There's gonna be a fight <laughs> tonight. Now who's fucking up the song? It's Rumble. There's gonna be a rumble. 
<laughs> I don't know. We're going to rumble. That's it. We're going to rumble tonight. We're going to rumble. That's it. I'm not snapping properly, though. I had no rhythm. You caught me off guard. You were singing show tunes, and it completely un- un- undid my world. Uh, no. Okay, what were we talking about? Oh, we're talking about the Russians and the Americans yeah, fighting yeah. On, Sp- on, on Sputnik, on Mars, <clears throat> on the moon, on whatever the thing is that orbits us. Yeah, yeah. Can you can you believe that like they get they literally get to the moon like fifty years after, after the rest of us? Yeah, we're like, ah fuck it. After we've gotten bored of it. And the Russians have run out of money to do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why so why now why do they go to the moon? Oh man. I mean, I guess it's the first like before you can go to anywhere else, you gotta go to the moon, I guess. Yeah, I mean, do you have the technology to get to the moon? Okay, fair enough. Now let's try somewhere else. Oh, we well, did the now moon. let's do a uh, space station. So do, were they people or was it unmanned? Uh unmanned. Well, that's not nearly as they're gonna, exciting. They're going to send people next year. Really? Yeah. We're finally going to have people again on the moon? Yeah. It's just going to be, you know, Chinese? They're going to be speaking Mandarin? Do they speak Mandarin? Cantonese? I think there's several dialects. Yeah. Mandarin is like the high Chinese, right? Like the that's what the royals speak? I don't know. I don't know either. We can never be royals. If it was high, if it was high <laughs> Chinese, does that mean there's like... 57 different words for Cheetos. <laughs> 57 words for Cheetos. 4,000 words for police. <laughs> Just police and Cheetos. No word for work. No? No. no. Not, in high, not in high Chinese? Not in high Chinese. Not in high Chinese. Mm. Uh, I had the CD boombox, but here's the problem, though. I had the CD boombox, but like the first 10 CDs I had, none of them were CDs that my father approved of. So, so why did you have them? Well, it, that's what headphones were invented for. Like I would literally like huddle next to my – I'd be sitting in an uncomfortable chair next to my CD boombox and listen to, you know, I don't know, Aerosmith Big Ones or whatever it was. Big Ones was one I specifically remember. I would listen to it all the time, and I'd be like, my father would definitely not approve of this music. I have to keep this secret. You know, every year when we used to go to Mardi Gras, uh, for whatever reason, there was always a song that came out. It was just the fucking theme. That was the Mardi Gras song? Yes, and we would listen to that shit the whole way down to New Orleans and the whole way back up and the whole fucking time. Like, Fat Bottom Girls... (laughs) Was a theme song one year. Yes. Remix to Ignition <laughs> was a theme song for another one. Baby Fresh Out the Kitchen, it's, remi- it's the remix to Ignition. Yes. Hey, you know Black Panties is in stores now. Are you familiar? Well, I'm, Black Panties have been in stores since like the fucking 1800s. <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the new R. Kelly album, sir. Black Panties. Oh, is that a... Uh... It's his, it's his new album. It's out. It's it's available now in digital stores and physical stores. Is it stores at all related to In the Closet? Uh, no. Like why he was in the closet, he found some black panties. <laughs> no. But uh, supposedly he has promised that there will be new entries to the uh, Trapped in the Closet saga this year as well. I've, I've never seen any of it. I've seen like clips of it, and I've heard... Uh, you know, fifteen seconds of it at a time, or something on like Hollywood Babylon, uh, when they when they play Lucius the Stuttering Pimp or whatever. But other than that, I haven't. I've never seen it. Have you watched it? Well, is uh, I think uh, is Contagious what? part of it? Or did that kind of start it? Uh, no, Contagious was part of his. He had a song cycle before Trapped in the Closet ever was a thing. He had a song cycle where he made a series of music videos that were all interlocking. And he wasn't the only... like he did. Some of them were his videos. Some of them were Ron Isley videos. Some of right. them were... Uh, like Kelly Rowland had a video that was part of the cycle. But there were about six videos in a row that told the story of Mr. Big and this street guy, this street tough, whatever, R. Kelly played. Yeah, yeah. And it was like R. Kelly's rise and fall through the criminal empire as told through, uh, you know, booty calls entangled with Mr. Big's people. Dude, I feel like uh, I feel like the artists... Or maybe I made all of that up. I think that was the case, though. You know what? Here's a little advice for people trying to get into the uh, the music game. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, this, is, this is coming from successful recording uh, producer, other guy. <laughs> Dude, I'm like fucking m- multi-baloney. Hey, you're just like us. Uh, you put your pants on one leg at a time. It's just when you put your pants on, you go make gold records. <laughs> <laughs> Except for when I put my pants on, I go make baloney sandwiches. Uh, just like you. Treat, if you, wanna, if you want to just, 
if if you're okay with not being a superstar, cool, because chances are you're not gonna be. <laughs> but if you treat the music industry like like uh, like a uh, like the TV industry or a movie industry, right? Um, because there's certain actors, dude, that have just made a fucking living playing third and fourth fiddles. Sure. Right. Well, that's kind of what like R. Kelly is, right? He's gonna sing with fucking everybody. He just never turns down a duet. Never. <laughs> and always shows up and kills it. Yeah. Uh, I. He's like the uh, who would that who would that be in TV? Who keeps coming back on television? Well, but it would have to be somebody. It would have to be somebody that you're a little afraid might piss on the floor in the green room when they come over to shoot their their spot he's like the woody harrelson of of (laughs) music woody harrelson i wouldn't be afraid of him pissing on the floor in the green room he just kind of smells like piss sometimes since he doesn't like deodorant um i i say that i don't know that for a fact i'm just assuming he's a hippie he's got like a hemp suit i'm assuming that he uh doesn't like deodorant or at least antiperspirants probably why were we talking about r kelly oh there's a you should look it up and if I'm going to suggest to our listeners they should look it up too. R. Kelly the the song is called Genius, as in sex genius. That's the the lyric is I'm a sex genius. I am a genius. No, that's not how it goes. Uh, uh, Benedict Cumberbatch, are you familiar with him? Plays Sherlock. Played uh, spoiler alert Khan in the latest Star Trek movie. Yeah. Uh, he he uh, was on I believe it was the like the Fallon show. Uh, late night with Jimmy Fallon. I mean, I'm pretty sure Benedict Cumberditch has been on a lot of shows. Cumberditch. Oh no, he's been on many of the shows. Cumberditch is not his name, by the way. The, the you know he's got a fan. He's got a whole fangirl uh, empire that's going to come for you because you mispronounced his name. Uh, how do you know I'm not part of said empire? <laughs> oh, and you're just doing that debate him. You're going to post on on the forums. You're going to be like, listen to what this motherfucker said about our leader. He called him Cumberdatch, and then just okay. force the downloads. Then, hey, I, I, you know what? I agree with you. I completely, <laughs> ladies. I am so sorry for uh, for mispronouncing Benedict Benedict Dumberwitch, uh, <laughs> his name. It it won't happen again. I'm sorry. Just I feel like hey, if you see me on the street, just uh, just know I'm, I'm sorry. I feel I feel like I feel like he's like Harry Potter grew up. You know, he defeated uh, Voldemort once and for all, and the Ministry of Magic came to him, and they were like, Harry, thank you for saving us. You can have anything you would like. What can we gift you with? And he was like, I'd like to go to the mor- to the muggle world and be a movie star. And so he's Benedict Cumberbatch, because they think that's a normal person name. Yeah, I'm, pre- yeah, I- I'm pretty sure that one of your name is uh, is uh, Benedict Slummermitch. <laughs> uh, your-, your options are movie star or wizard. Yeah, I think that was pretty much the only two. Like the 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 slummer mitches, they go back fucking generations, generations of just fucking fireball throwing, snake eating fucking slummer you want, witches. You want a little eye of Newt? The the yeah. the, 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 the cumber snatches are exactly the yep. family to talk to, huh? Yep. Anyway, he was on the Fallon show, and he did a dramatic reading of some of the lyrics of sex genius from R. Kelly's Black Panties. It's well worth the price of admission. Right on. Uh, I, I'm I'm thinking that perhaps uh, you and I might actually take on some of the lyrics of, of R. Kelly's other songs at some later point. That might be my suggestion for a potential new segment to oh, bring it right back on. from last week. So uh, your, your suggestion is dramatic readings of, dramatic of readings, R. Kelly. And maybe not just R. Kelly songs. But soul songs in particular, like R and B songs, are ripe for this. Uh, and now that R and B and and hip hop in general have kind of like taken over pop music, those don't all have to be uh, African American artists necessarily, or, yeah. or, or or black artists. There's a lot of white people singing soul songs too. Justin Timberlake, every song Justin Timberlake has sang since he left In Sync has been a soul. We'll just song. say dramatic readings of popular music. Very dramatic readings of popular music. Excellent. Very, yeah. very good. Yeah, yeah. I'm, th- I'm going to suggest that we might try that. And so I we're think gonna, we're going to do pop dramatics. Yeah, I like that pop pop dramatics. I think there's something better than that. I'm sure there is pop pop trom pop pop romedy. Pomra, 
pa- it's terrible. Pa- it's, okay, so uh, let's go into a little Southern comfort. Why don't we? This is going to be a little different than normal. Normally, the way that we play Southern Comfort is I tell you a story, I give you the headline and and some information from the news article. And I have to figure out you what state pick the it's state. from. That that's that's not the uh, the case here uh, because I just want to talk about the fact that Boo. the <laughs> the. The uh, the honorable former governor of Louisiana. Oh, you're talking about he's he's, uh, he's governor running for Congress? Edwin Governor Edwin Edwards. Yes, he's going to run for Congress. There's no way he gets it, dude. There's really? No way. Oh, I think it's a shoe in. I think it's a done fucking deal. What? People in Louisiana, we understand that our politicians are going to steal from us. Name a good. It's better to have the devil you know than the devil you don't. At least this one tells you up front he's going to steal and he's going to do a real good job of it and steal some for you too. That's, that's like, I'm going to bring you some too, so don't worry about it. That other fella is going to steal you blind and not leave you. Number in. one, he's what, 86? He's very old. He's 86, 87, something like that. He's young at heart though. You know he hasn't made a good decision in 30 years, man. Hey, I think his wife was a pretty good decision. You seen that lady? His new really? one? You think marrying a gold digger is a good decision? <laughs> hey, as she put it, if I was a, I, I'm the best I do at all the stuff that I try. If I was a gold digger, I would have done better. That's what she said about Edwin Edwards and the and the assertions that she was a gold digger. Let me. Here's wait, what wait, I want to okay, do. Let's 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 play with that scenario a little bit. Okay. You say let's say she marries. A, let's this. let's say she marries a super rich person, and he is is older, eighty six, eighty seven, into his nineties. And let's say they've been married a year, a year and a half, two years, and that motherfucker ends up dying. Right. Guess who's going to be a suspect? Well, yeah, okay, you but that didn't happen Edwin to Edwards. Nicole. You marry Edwin Edwards, and he comes up dead. Ain't no telling how. <laughs> And guess what? She still got time to go find a motherfucking another one. <laughs> I think it's true love, personally. Uh, what I wanted to do for those, because we, you know, we have not only are we listened to all over this great nation of ours, but but international. The audience of Two Guys One Podcast is listened to in the Russian Federation. We got a steady listener there now. By the way, I don't even know where the Russian Federation is, but Dosvidanya to you, sir. It's wherever. Putin says it it's is. wherever the fuck Putin says it is. That's right. Russia is wherever we are. <laughs> uh, uh, we're glad to have you on board, though. We got some French with us now. Uh, they're steady. The fucking Canadians, they're passing us around because we're growing there uh, north of the border. As That's nice as, to see. As soon as we skip an episode... With this will all evaporate. The French are fucking gone. <laughs> the, 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 on it, uh, 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 I was trying to to, to quote uh, Jay Z and Kanye West from uh, Ninjas in Paris there, but I couldn't think of an appropriate lyric, um, not one that I could reference anyway. Uh, what I wanted to do for our international listeners, especially, yeah, you know what, you hit a nerve, man. What you said, what? you couldn't come up with a lyric that you could reference. Yeah. <laughs> Are these people putting words in their music and putting it out into the public? Yes. Then you can say whatever the fuck you want. Yeah, now I, there's a whole. As a matter of fact, there's a. We should we should discuss it someday. Someday, actually, I would like to discuss it with you and maybe record it. Maybe we don't play it. Maybe we do. There's a Grantland article actually talking about the experience of being like a progressive young white man standing in a crowd at a Kanye concert. Where thousands and thousands of people are yelling the N word at the top of their voice. And like, it's weird. It's a weird situation that, like, and it's, it's, it's where we are in culture. And I, I like that intelligent people are examining the idea, not just like accepting it on face value. The word has, a, the word has meaning. It has meaning in a negative way, it has meaning in a positive way for some people, apparently. Well, here's the thing, man. If it, if it's, if it's that big a deal, Right. Yeah. Then just stop using it. Guess, guess, guess what the fuck we don't use anymore. Guess what we don't say anymore. Giggle water. <laughs> you know why? Because people decided to just stop using it. <laughs> That's true. That's true. I suppose. I think there is a. I think there is a movement among the the didn't the was it the NFL that tried to ban it? Yeah, yeah. Which was the stupidest idea. Like. An organization made up of largely middle-aged white men, but on the backs of young black men, can't tell them I'm not, not look, to I'm say not gonna a word. Say, I'm not going to say it because I'm not an insensitive, uh, right. racially insensitive asshole, but 
I don't hold it against anybody who chooses to use it. Well, I don't know. I mean, I th- I think it depends on how you use it. I just think I, th- I don't. We got off on a tangent here, but I do think. I'm going to send you that article because it was really, really well done. Grant Landright does a great fucking job on that all the time. All right. Here's what I wanted to do, though, for our international audience, because they don't know who this dude is. They don't know Edwin Edwards like like we do. They don't know the governor. They don't know why it's interesting why this 87-year-old man married to a much younger woman is going to run for Congress and why anybody would care. Uh, I found an article. Or they, hell, they don't even know what the fuck a vote is. <laughs> But not if they're from Russia, maybe. Uh, we, this is from NOLA.com. Uh, and uh, this is a, a collection of quotes uh, from uh, Edwin Edwards. This is a, a look back as we get ready for his congressional run. Oh, Lordy. There are only two contingencies which I envision at this time that would inhibit me from completing this term. One of them is death, which I intend to resist to the bitter end. And the other is the possibility, no matter how slight it may be, that I could become a national official. That was on his reelection as governor. Um, <clears throat> Dave Treen is so slow, it takes him an hour and a half to watch 60 Minutes. Dave Treen was running against him at the time. That was during the 1983 campaign uh, versus the incumbent governor. The only way I can lose this race is to be caught in bed with a live boy or a dead girl. That was during the same <laughs> 1983 race. That's that's a real that's that's how do we how it gets right to the crux. How do we elect these people? The only way I can lose this race is if I'm caught in bed with a live boy or a dead girl. <clears throat> yeah, that's that's your governor, ladies and gentlemen, or was your governor? The only place where David Duke and I are alike is that we're both wizards under the sheets. <laughs> no, he did not say that. That was during the 91 gubernatorial campaign versus former KKK Grand Wizard David Duke. Yes, listeners, you heard that right. The former Grand Wizard of the KKK ran for governor of Louisiana and didn't do too badly. He lost, but he, he wasn't like a rout. Uh, here we go. Here's another quote from Edwin. There's an old Chinese proverb that says, if you wait by the river long enough, you will see the bodies of your dead enemies float by. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> That's some fucking Wrath of Khan shit right there. Uh, that was um, uh, during the same campaign against uh, David Duke, except he was he was also battling uh, that time Governor uh, Buddy Romer. Uh, Buddy Romer. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> While he's hugging a nun during his visit to Paris's Notre Dame Cathedral, this is in 84, he says, Sister, just don't let me get into the habit. <laughs> wow. Uh, this is during his uh, t- 2011 post-prison roast. Uh, so the, the, the governor, by the way, yes, he got arrested for bribery, tax evasion, fraud, uh, embezzlement, embezzlement, a whole all, bunch of shit. All of it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ended up going to jail. For like eight years, right? I mean, he went away for a while. It was more than eight years, dude. He was... Well, he like was, a decade? Yeah, he was in jail for a while. 10, 12? I, I got, don't know. It was a long time. I've got his autobiography. I haven't read it. Okay, it was a while. He was in he was in jail in a while. He gets out of jail, though, and what do they do in, in Baton Rouge? They throw him a fucking roast. Uh, this is one of the things that he said at the roast. He says, I give blood for them to make Viagra. <laughs> yeah. Uh, apparently, his brother warned him... Uh, when he was getting married to this woman, 50 years his junior, uh, his brother was telling him, hey, listen, sex with your new wife, it, you know, you're going to have to take it easy, Edwin. It could be dangerous. Could be fatal. And he says, well, Marion, if she dies, she dies. <laughs> God bless. There's no way he wins. There's no way he wins. Uh <laughs> Uh, during his uh, 2011 roast, once again, he was remarking on the aphrodisiac nature of oysters. He said, I ate a dozen last night and only 10 of them worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good line. That is a That's good a line. That's a really good line. Um, uh, when asked at the roast about current governor of Louisiana, Bobby Jindal, he said, I think he makes a great governor for California and Minnesota and Florida. All those places where people keep putting up all that money concerned about who the governor of Louisiana is. That's our that's our uh, former governor, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> this is my favorite, though, and this is where we're going to leave this. On the use that he's now finally found for Republicans, he's, of course, a li- lifetime Democrat. Um, uh, this was during his 2012 press conference with his new wife, who is a registered member of the GOP. She, <laughs> he says, it's simple. You sleep with them. 
That's what the that's what the Republicans are for. You just sleep with them. I like it. Uh, he also redid Groucho Marx's famous quip: "You're only as young as the woman you feel." And brother, it's fun feeling her. <laughs> I love this motherfucker. He's just a dirty old man. He is a dirty old man. But you know what else he is? He he is an old school politician. And which is what you, yeah, well, that's exactly what we need more of. No, well, let me tell you why. I think it's almost okay. It's not okay. There's nothing you're gonna say. There's I, nothing you're gonna say. You like dick and fart jokes, and that's <laughs> why you like him. I that's do like it. You don't like him for any of his political beliefs because the only political belief this motherfucker has is how to get cash <laughs> into his goddamn pocket without getting caught. I don't think that's the only thing it that is he is. The I, only thing. I think that's. I think that's one of. If the saying things. the sky is blue will get him a hundred bucks, he'll say the guy's sky is blue. If saying it's green will get him two fifty, he's gonna say the motherfucker's green. I maybe maybe I'm maybe it's just the populist in me. But like I, like Huey Long, for instance. Okay, let's remove ourselves from it because we Edwin Edwards is, is in our lifetime. Let's remove ourselves from it. You go back to Huey Long. Huey Long, no doubt, shook this state down, was running it even after he wasn't the governor illegally. A lot of stuff behind the scenes wasn't right. He probably was using the police in inappropriate ways. All He probably made a lot of money on the back ends of these deals. I, but he also did a lot for the common man. That's what I'm saying. No, man. The only thing that you're showing is how fucking behind the times, backwaters, and bumpkin Louisiana is <laughs> that it took Huey P. Long. Yeah, he did great things because he built fucking roads. You're telling me he did great things because we get to go to school for free? You're telling me he did great things because of all these works that he did here yeah. that other states had done have. decades for bu- Way before we got it. Well, I mean, and, and uh, to be fair, that is one of the things that Huey did is so, he put so roads you want, into so these you little back ass towns. You want me to be like, oh, hey, good job, Huey P. Way to go. Way to, uh, dude, he's a snake oil salesman, man. <laughs> That's all it is. The fact that the 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 fact that the you got better after drinking the snake oil was a coincidence. Yeah, that's what you're smoke saying. Smoking mirrors. All right, all right, fair enough then. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, that's our governor Edwin Edwards, and that's Southern Comfort for this week. And that's our best of show. Wow, a hundred episodes, two years, and there's the latest and greatest. All right, so thanks for listening. Tell your friends, review us in iTunes and Stitcher, etc. I like to hear myself talk, so I'd probably do this regardless, but I much prefer having an audience. So sincerely, thank you from the bottom of my dirty little heart. Uh, Just before we leave you, I didn't want to leave you without a word from Bob Ross, so here we go. Any way you want it to be, that's just right. And that's the podcast. It's nothing new We're just killing time in the waiting room Read a magazine Till they figure out what to do with me La na 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 We all have jobs But it's safe to say that's not who we are It's just what we do while we're killing time in the waiting room La na 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 This This can't be All that we've hoped for All that we've hoped for all that we've hoped This is our curse It's as beautiful as the day we're born 
it could be worse if we all had to wait alone. Na 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 <laughs> Do what it. happens if you don't pay your exorcist? Dang, I don't know. What? You get repossessed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. <laughs> 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 that made my day. That made my day.